I'm Lewiltna. Hello, everybody. My name is Angela Sterrett. I'm Gixan and Irish on my father's side, and I'm Newfoundlander in brackets Irish on my mother's side. I have been a journalist for over 20 years. In 2014, I was awarded one of the most prestigious awards to journalists in Canada, known as the William Southam Journalism Award, and I was the first Indigenous person in Canada ever to receive it, even though it started in 1962. Um, I probably started getting bullying, bullied, started getting bullied when I was uh, in grade three, and um, it just kept on happening everywhere I went. So sometimes it would get so bad that I would change schools and then it would start all over again. And I I remember kids coming around the corner with two by fours to hit me. I remember getting punched in the face. I remember getting pushed into the ground. I remember groups of girls strug surrounding me and sometimes I'd have to run, sometimes I'd have to fight. And so my parents, I think I was in grade six, and they suggested that I move in with my dad and my biological dad. And that's when things got way worse. He was a pretty severe, brutal drug addict and alcoholic. And I was physically, mentally and emotionally abused daily. And I was in and out of the hospital. I was in and out of the ministry. I was in and out of group homes and finally ended up on the street where I experienced a lot of, of violence and exploitation and was vulnerable to a lot of different things and um, I was on the street for quite a long time and I mean I'm not just talking about couch surfing I was living in abandoned buildings I was living on the actual street under bridges and I was a child I was 14 when when I was in that situation and one of the things that saved me is definitely having people believe in me, believe my story and believe that, you know, I could achieve anything I wanted, even in the state that I was in. Um, while I was on the street, I graduated high school. I was the valedictorian of my school, actually. Um, actually, probably when I was 17 is when I became a journalist, when I was sort of pushed by somebody to start telling stories, other people's stories, and it would maybe help my own healing, and it did. But I think one of the biggest things that helped me along my journey is that I was so incredibly shy from being bullied all those years that I'd be in a social group and I would just put my head down and I would start to draw and I would start to write. And I, I couldn't talk. I, I couldn't um, be part of that social group. And it was painful because, you know, when you're growing up being popular and being cool and all that stuff is so important. But um, I just did what I did and I started to draw and I started to write and when I left the streets I had books and books and books of poetry and writing and drawings and a lot of it was based on my anger and it was based on sorrow and sadness and grief I lost a lot of people on the streets but it gave me something it gave me a tool and that was my process and looking back throughout my life, that was always sort of my thing. You don't have to follow in somebody else's footsteps. You don't have to follow the crowd. But you yourself can get through this pain. And you can follow your dreams. It doesn't matter what you've been given. I had nothing. I had no blankets. I had no family. I had sometimes no friends. And I had me. And I reached out for help. And, you know, for me, it was teachers. And, and that's what saved me in the end and was, was my education and, and my drawing and my writing. And at the end, I'd be a broadcast journalist. Never would I have expected that. But this is the outcome of, of my journey. And please don't give up. Please know how special you are. And please know that you're loved. We hold you up. All of us. Take care.